Greggy, Paul um, encourages Christians to uh, put their mind on things above. But how do Christians avoid the trap of focusing on things above without neglecting their earthly responsibilities? Yeah, and that's, that, Chris, that's a great question because I, I think a lot of people are naturally afraid that if they focus so much on heavenly things, they'll be of no earthly good. But the reality is, the reality couldn't be any further away from that. It's what is so wonderful, and I think this is one of the reasons that Colossians is such a gift to us, is that Paul speaks directly to that. He talks at the beginning of chapter 3 about the need to seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, and to set our minds on things that are above, not on things that are, that are on the earth. And then he reminds us that we have died and our life is hid with Christ in God. But then he turns to, okay, what does it mean to set your mind on earthly things? I mean, to set your mind on heavenly things. And what he talks about is the very practical stuff of living in this life. We live in this life with a heavenly mindset. And what that means is that we do the things that are in the rest of Colossians 3 and chapter 4, putting to death that which is earthly in us, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry, and recognizing that we used to be characterized by these things, but we don't have to be characterized by them anymore. So in a word, to set our mind on, on things above is to put to death the things in us that are not like him. And then on the positive side, to, to put on at precisely as those who know that we have been chosen and are called to be holy and are beloved by him, to put on who Christ is, compassion as he was compassionate, kindness as he was kind, lowliness as he was lowly, meekness as he was meek, patience as he was patient, forgiving one another the way that he has forgiven us. And above all these things, to put on love, which pretty much defines who he was and who he is. So living a heavenly mindset is living in union with him in the here and now down here on earth. And then he goes on to talk about how we worship together. And then he goes on to talk about living in relationships as husbands and wives, as parents and children, as masters and slaves, and, and, and seasoning our whole lives with, with prayer. So it's living like before him and in him and with him, but knowing that his interest is in filling our lives with him in the here and now. So it's becoming so heavenly minded that we are actually of earthly good. 